Hello, this is Doc Severson for the Theonite video for Tuesday, December 6th. What I have here is a daily chart of the VX or the volatility futures. So this rolls over about every month or so. You can see, right? So this is the volatility futures, not the VIX, because this is going to be a bit more accurate. And what we have is actually a close below the Bollinger Bands today after a squeeze. So anytime we see the bands coming together, usually this range contraction leads to some type of range expansion. Normally this range expansion is to the upside. But it's been a while since we've had such complacency where the, the volatility futures actually closed below the lower Bollinger Band. So let's see what happened the last time we got this sense of complacency into the market, as we're definitely getting right now. All right, so let's just watch that lower Bollinger Band here. And as you can see, as we scrub back through the last couple of years of data, it's been a long time since we've seen this. So really, the last time that we saw this get below the lower Bollinger Band, we had a little reaction over the next month or so, and this was in the mid-April time frame. So mid-April time frame of 2016. We'll look at this on the chart in just a minute on the on the spiders and before that let's see if we can find any other instances of this occurring yeah it's been a long time since we've seen this now we're back into 2015 with all of this ultra low volatility back in 2015 right so you can see that we just don't have this happen very often so here was may of 2015 where we saw this occur so let's flip over to the spider chart and see if we can make sense of this. Okay, so looking at the chart here in 2015, let's go back to May of 2015 first. So we had this level up here with this same level of complacency, and this led to about the next two to three months of corrective price action that was very much sideways, but had a definite downside bias to this when we had that level of complacency. And then if we go to this year in April at the same time, we actually closed above that upper Bollinger Band, we did see about another month of corrective price action before this started to, to work its way higher from there. So anytime that we see this level of complacency on the VIX futures, or the volatility futures, then we need to be concerned that a little bit too much complacency is coming into the market. Okay, so let's flip over to the S&Ps right now and kind of get a, a top-down sense for what's going on. What we are seeing is the price really after the election moving sort of back into that same range expansion to range contraction mode. So this is what I call stair-stepping, when markets kind of break out, run as far as they can go, and then consolidate, kind of work off that move, find the next catalyst to break out again, and then do the same thing again and again. We saw this throughout 2013, 2014. This is actually, if you look at the monthly chart, overall, this consumes most of the price action of the past 20 years is price action similar to what we're seeing right now. All of these big chunks of time is where we saw very much the same thing. Range expansion to range contraction, stair-stepping, just oscillating between these two states. And so now, no surprise, we're into the next little mini range here, and the price is knocking on the door, see if it can break above that 221.8 level on the spiders. Now it's no surprise that this pulled into a consolidation zone because we did have the chart run out of energy temporarily. You can think of this almost as a fuel gauge where we have lots of potential energy when we see stocks doing something like this, where it's just going sideways. This is what builds up the energy. This is what winds up the spring. That energy actually went to the downside first before going to the upside. On a larger time frame, this is all nonlinear price action, all down, then up. This is nowhere. This is no trend. And this is why it had a lot of energy to be able to break out at this time. Now, there's those that also will identify that we're going to be in a kind of a rising wedge environment. We're going to start to see this wedging up here. Now, I don't know how this is going to go, but what I've seen over the last several years is that wedges, even though a rising pattern is supposed to break to the downside eventually, 
What we typically see is that a lot of times these rising patterns will break through the top trend line first and go nearly completely vertical first. People chasing after this, the shorts have already been baked long ago by this point. This is purely people chasing after price. And then, then is when we see the weakness coming into this. So you can see some examples of this coming along from time to time along here as the price goes nearly vertical before it finally uh, comes back down to earth. So we haven't seen that quite yet. It's been a while since 2016 has generally been a very corrective year so far where we've had corrections, slingshot moves, sideways price action, price pulling down, straight back up again, correct the price action. It's been the same exact sort of mode again and again through here. So with that in mind, let's go over to the sectors and see what's actually moving as of today. Now, no surprise, financials just continue to get big to the upside. I mean, there's just no way you want to be stepping in front of this freight train right now. Because it is moving in precisely the manner that it's going to allow it to do this. Range expansion to range contraction. Range expansion until it hits the next level of exhaustion. And then it'll go into range, or range contraction again. So it's doing precisely what it has to do. This is a huge imbalance between supply and demand. And there's going to be no technical indicator that's really going to say, hey, this is the top, or this is a great place to short it. There's just going to be those stocks, such as right now financials is one of them. So everything under the financial sector right now, given the fact that rates are probably going to be rising, then banks and financial institutions have a lot more room to work with in here. And this is you're going to see this gap filled very, very quickly, I do believe. Now, it's not going to get there all at once. It will stop and flag out from time to time, in which case usually people turn their attention away from it as it does build that flag. So example on the weekly chart, if it gets to this point, you may see it flag out for a number of weeks and people sort of say, well, okay, that one's done. No, it's not done. It's just taking a rest by the same manner that we talked about the stair-stepping movement here. So this will lead to the next breakout, etc. But I don't expect this thing to come screaming back down here like everybody else does that insists on shorting everything that's moving to the upside. So this to me is a fundamental shift in supply and demand right now. And there's, there's really, this is the only way you're going to explain it, which is range contraction, range expansion. It's just that there's no indicator out there that's going to be accurate in terms of identifying that. It's not worth it. Financial or the utilities continue to get pounded somewhat because the dividend play is sort of over for now. There's still interest in dividends, but just not to the degree that it was earlier this year when dividends were the only game in town. Here is the, the uh, technology sector, and this is coiling up like crazy right now. So there's a huge amount of potential energy for this one. So this is similar, but not exactly like the NASDAQ, but close enough right now. But all of this is just the spring being wound up for the next for the next breakout. So watch this one carefully. Here's builders. Okay, builders, uh, building materials is getting, um, you know, <laughs> obviously build the wall and build infrastructure. And this is getting a huge burst right now from, from that. So into exhaustion would expect to see this consolidate in the short term. Consumer staples have been beat up lately. This has been a great source of capital to rotate into some of the other sectors, but got a little bounce today. But this is not necessarily destructive. It has not changed polarity yet. It has not set up a lower high and a lower low in the weekly chart. So right now it's still working higher, but this is obviously a major higher low so far. We'll have to see how this one holds. Here is industrials, just like the Dow chart, is into all-time sky high and would expect to see this into stair-stepping as well, too. Healthcare, who knows what's going to be happening in healthcare in the next year? And this uncertainty is really set up in the chart. So this is more of a huge consolidation pattern after this completely vertical move that pretty much topped out in June of 2015, and it's been going 
sideways in a very volatile manner. So a lot of people just focus on the daily chart and the volatility. But when you zoom out and look at what's happening on the monthly chart, this makes total sense. This is basically just a huge triangle pattern that's setting up right now in healthcare. So this is all very, very normal and still has not broken trend for healthcare. Okay, from here, energy has shown signs of brilliance and a little bit of profit taking. So no real difference here. I mean, big breakout after huge expectations for the past six months or so. So finally a breakout, but it doesn't seem to have the sustaining power for this breakout that you would expect. Here's consumer discretionary, and as expected, this one is still grinding its way higher. Nobody's taking profits in consumer discretionary yet. There is a lot of optimism that's out there, which is a big change over the course of the last couple of years. So optimism equates to consumer discretionary. But let's circle back here. Let's go back to, in this case, the VIX, right? So the VIX, whether we look at the VIX or whether we look at the actual volatility futures, which are a bit more accurate, this is obviously signaling something that we don't want to get too carried away right now just because generally there is a positive bias into the end of the year. Okay, no surprise there, but there can be, in some cases, like what we're seeing right now, just a little bit too much. This is really, really stretched to the downside. I would expect to see a little bit more consolidation, perhaps a little bit more corrective price action here in the near term. So don't make any assumptions over the last two, three weeks of the year here. Make sure you know your risk down to the penny if something is going to happen. And if it will happen, it usually does happen overnight. Overnight when you're least able to hedge that position. All right, folks, that is it for tonight's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.